The Soybean School on RealAgriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Cruiser Max Vibrance, High Stick NT, and the Manitoba Pulse Girl. Here on Real Agriculture by Daryl Beswitherick, the program manager for quality assurance and reinspection here at uh, the Canadian Grain Commission in uh, in downtown Winnipeg. And Daryl, we uh, we have some samples, soybean samples laid out in in front of us here for this uh, episode of the Soybean School. We've seen some quality issues, uh, of course, across Western Canada this year, and uh, seeing some quality issues now in Ontario as well. Uh, when it comes to soybeans, what do you uh, what do you look for for uh, downgrading factors? I guess first of all. I guess, yeah, for this year's crop, uh, it's actually a very typical crop in that uh, we're seeing uh, the green immaturity is uh, not dropping the grades out of a number one into a number two, as well as some uh, adhered soil is uh, is dropping it down to a number two as well. Uh, we're not seeing any uh, major, uh, you know, downgrades to lower than a number two for, uh, you know, for damages this year, but uh, they may be out there and there may be some producers that are fighting with that. So. So the difference between a number one and a number two, most producers, at least in Western Canada, would be would be satisfied with the two. Yeah, you know what? Uh, in the uh, in Western Canada, most uh, producers are growing uh, GM soybeans, and they're growing them for oil uh, crush market. And uh, the number one soybean is uh, grade is a very premium market for intended for the food market. Uh, it's uh, got very little amounts of uh, adhered soil and very low um, and infrequent amount of uh, immaturity in there. And, uh, and the number two grade is quite large. So, uh, you know, for the amount of soil you can have, we actually have a photo print that uh, is available to licensed companies that can use as grading. And uh, they, so it tell, shows, represents how much soil can be uh, allowed in a number two. And, uh, and then, uh, uh, so we, we have that tool to help us grade that. Uh, Earth tag would be one of the more common downgrading. Yeah, it is. It really is. Uh, it's with the with the crush market. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's the producers are are growing soybeans, so they're they're trying to shoot for that number two two market. And the earth tag that's allowed in there is is quite a bit. And and it does. It's not uncommon to, to see earth tag on the soybeans just because of they're growing so low to the to the ground that they got the combines just scraping the ground uh, to pick up all the, the pods. So uh, earth tag is very common. Green seed would also be uh, at the top of the, the list in terms of occurrence. Yes, uh, immaturity. It's uh, it's always seems to kind of be be there in, in some at some amount. Um, it just uh, but when you're going again for the crush market, you can have uh, some immaturity in in the seeds. Uh, I think with the the important thing there with uh, immaturity is is it's uh, uh, if you have green seeds, uh, the thing is you got to cut them. Uh, to determine if there's any damage to the cotyledon. If the green has started to penetrate the cotyledon at all, then it becomes damaged. Uh, otherwise, uh, you can have, uh, there's no limit to the amount of green hulls you can have in a number two grade. And that's something we saw, was it two years ago? Uh, it was implemented two years ago, yeah. Okay. We did uh, We did the research, we, uh, we uh, did a survey with uh, crushers, soybean crushers and plants and, and uh, and in most cases, sometimes the hull is even removed, and, and it has uh, no impact on the end product. How about uh, mold showing up in a, in a sample? Is that something that you see? Uh, it can. We have uh, a couple of, one mold is called downy mildew that can show up. Uh, downy mildew, uh, it has to cover more than 50% of the kernel in order to be considered as damaged. And so uh, we have tolerances of uh, two percent in number one, three percent in number two, five percent in number three. Uh, so it would it would fit into that overall damage tolerance. We've seen frosts uh, hit some soybean fields early this year. Uh, are you seeing some frost in, in samples? We are not seeing the frost yet in the samples that we've seen in our harvest sample program. Uh, but uh, Manitoba and you know Saskatchewan, where we're growing uh, soybeans in untraditional soybean acres, uh, there and soybeans are they are getting sh uh, shorter growing seasons now, so that it uh, it is more. Um, it makes it easier for producers to, to grow good quality soybeans now in Western Canada, but uh, our shorter growing season still affects uh, some crops. And so, again, we're, we're not seeing that, but uh, 
but it could possibly uh, be showing up for some producers. Again, you know, to determine that, you're going to see green seeds. You're going to be cutting uh, the, the kernels to determine whether that, that uh, the, the cotyledon is green, and then it should have a waxy appearance to it as well to determine if it is frost damage. What about purple seed stain? Is that something that you, uh, that you see in samples coming into the CGC? We don't see a lot of it in Western Canada. It's typically more from an Eastern, Eastern Canada point of view. Uh, we do have purple modeling, and where we do actually have a print as well that uh, represents uh, the amount of purple modeling that's allowed in a sample. Uh, it is contained to the, to the hull again, but it does give a, a very distinct purple color to the seed. And, uh, but again, it's, it really is an Ontario grading factor. Continuing down the list then of, uh, of grading factors for soybeans, insect damage, is that something that, uh, that you see? We do see from time to time. Uh, it, it can affect it. Uh, usually the insect, uh, to be considered as insect damage, uh, it, the insect will penetrate the, the seed. You'll see a, a hole, and typically around that hole you will see some discoloration. Uh, again, you want to cut that kernel. Uh, see if that uh, discoloration is penetrated into the cotyledon at all. If it has, uh, then we would assess as damage and again goes into those overall damage tolerances. Okay. Soybean mosaic virus, is that anything that, uh, that's come through the lab here? Um, we do see that once in a while, but not very often. Um, it's uh, not, not very prevalent at all. And then uh, finally here, Phomopsis, is that uh, showing up in zone? Uh, we have seen some with Phomopsis. Uh, Phomopsis is uh, a sketching that uh, happens on the uh, exterior of the kernel. Uh, it doesn't downgrade it just for the etching. Uh, if there is some kind of mold or something associated with it, then that would be considered as damage. But the etching itself does not uh, cause any downgrade. All right. I think we're going to uh, shift over to uh, assessing dockage then here. Daryl, maybe take us through uh, through the process of, uh, of looking at, uh, at dockage in a, in a soybean sample. Certainly. Uh, dockage is uh, done uh, con using an, an eight round hole sieve. So uh, you have a, the sieve with you know, an eight millimeter round hole. And, uh, and so we would use a sample that is one kilogram in size. We would then put about 250 grams, which this is about 250, on top of the, the sieves at one time, and we would shake it back and forth 30 times. Once we have done that, we would actually, uh, we would have our material that uh, goes through, which is light aspiration uh, material that would be considered uh, dockage. All right. We can also use a Carter dockage machine to throw the remainder of this sample over to assist us in removing all of the other lightweight material that was too big to go through the, the, uh, the eight round hole sieve. Uh, without that, you can hand pick all the material uh, that you, you get. And so not taking any soybeans, but just the, the large material is all considered as dockage. And, uh, and then so if you had your, your uh, Carter dockage machine, you would use whatever came out in the aspiration, plus your hand pick, and you would add all of that together to consider as what is dockage. Uh, you can also uh, have earth pellets as well in the seeds or in the sample, and that would be, you could hand pick those up to 10% and be considered as dockage. Well, thanks for giving us an idea of uh, what to look for in our soybean zero. Oh, you're very welcome.